Hi, Ben. Hello. Hi, Ben. You, you saved me from having to say hello in as many languages as I thought I knew, and it was getting was a bit silly. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> It was very, very silly. Well, thank you so much for joining, Ben. Um, you thank are you. at your boutique and workshop in East London on Columbia Road, aren't you? That's right. So I'm here in the shop and I have my workshop here. I can show you if you want to. Yeah, let, let us have a little look round because it's, it's okay. you're unusual in that you make all your own jewellery with your own two hands. So this is my shop and then workshop yep. is here and that's where I sit and work. So I'm doing some work on a pave layout at the moment. Wow, and, and, and you work through the, the, the microscope, don't you, Ben? Yeah, because... so I, I work under this pretty much all day. And, and... and well, what, what magnification is that? Uh, I think it goes up to 20, 25. Wow, so you can get incredible detail. Yeah, so if I've got like 0.6 of a mil stone, I can still see it. But it also means you get obsessive about finishing and then you realise, you know, no one in the world, it's only you can see such detail because it's so small. And then this is the rest of the shop. And the view out onto, and normally there would be a flower market there, wouldn't there? Yep, so Sunday is flower market all down the street. Uh -huh. And um, it's full of all the traders and everyone selling fresh flowers. Right, yeah. So that, that very typical of that street, isn't it? It's, it's been a yeah. flower market for a long time, I think, hasn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. I think it's one of the, old, one of the older markets here in London. Brilliant. So it is fantastic and it's full of colour and flowers and people shouting. I mean, obviously at the moment it's a little bit different but that's it's coming back again this sunday it reopens brilliant brilliant so ben you showed us where you work which you can look up from your bench and you can see your shop and you can see your yeah. clients coming in and you make every piece by hand so what comes into your front door uh, ingots of gold and gemstones and what goes out are these incredible jewels that you take about a week to make each one is that right yeah, weeks, sometimes longer. It, you know, it really sort of depends on each piece. Um, getting the sort of idea and the design right first and then working through often with like drawings and models and then actually sitting and making. So it kind of depends how busy I am in the shop to how long you get to sit and really concentrate. So you need time just to really focus. But yeah, a, a good week on most wow. pieces. But that, that, like we were saying before, that's really quite unusual to make it all entirely yourself in your own workshop. Yeah, they're not meant, you know, there are not many people that still do it. And I've kind of even been thinking, I don't do the casting part, but um, I've been considering it too. But I think, you know, there's, you've kind of got to stop at certain parts. But um, it's given me much more of a sort of, it gives you more of a connection with the work you're making when you're finishing all of it. So I used to work with setters and I worked with an amazing setter, Nigel O'Reilly. And uh, a while ago he said, you know, why don't you go and back to setting your own work? And I went to see him and he showed me... Was, was he fed up with you, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He makes his own amazing pieces. So he's been doing that and um, we worked together for a long time. And... Um, so I went to see him and he showed me the sort of few kind of tricks and things, you know, which kind of no one ever does. So that was an amazing thing. And it kind of gave me uh, much more of a connection back to the jewellery. So some of the pieces here uh, still worked with Nigel on and then all the rest are pieces that I've been doing for the last few years as well. Wow. So there's a connection not just with you and the jewels that you've made, but the person who buys them can see the person who made them. Yeah. And, and look at your hands as proof of that. <laughs> they're, not, they're not pretty, but um, and I've been polishing today, so um, they get kind of worse and worse, but that's making jewellery. So yeah, I don't have kind of pretty hands for it. But, yeah, um, don't, don't trust a jeweller with a perfect manicure. No. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Very good. And um, color is huge for you. And I think the first ring you're going to show us is going to surprise everyone with this fabulous tone of, I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to give it away. It is. And um, let's just, I can show you. I was caught with. <laughs> that was very badly <laughs> dramatized on my part. Sorry. There it is. Look at that. Please go, can I pull? Incredible. So, it, sorry, I, if for those who didn't hear, that is an Ethiopian opal. So that's just, that's in the daylight. And then under the shop lights, it just sparkles and twinkles. So it's quite unusual for an Ethiopian, for opals to have this sort of shimmering like fireflies in it. Just uh, dazzling, isn't it? And I actually prefer it in the daylight. Can we see that there again? You sort of get more richness of color, don't you? Yeah. So, so for example, I, I know Ben, that literally you go to the ends of the earth to look for your, um, for your, for your stones and also you're very interested in the cut. Yes. So tell me about this one. Um, well, this I bought, I go to, you know, various gem shows and stuff. Um, I have actually been to Ethiopia, but I didn't buy opals at the time. That was another time. Mm -hmm. But um, it, um, I go to various shows. And, and so when you, I look at a lot of stones and um, you then you see one that's just exceptional and extraordinary. And opals tend not to have these tiny, tiny, tiny flecks of fire in it. So they're very, they're very different to the Australian opals. Um, they're totally different to Australian opals. And, um, mm. But they are amazing. Incredible. And, and like, you've set it with sort of like, they actually look like teeth, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's held in these mini, mini, mini claws all the way around the stone. Wait. Each one you carefully filed and polished. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're all po polished and filed in between, so you get all of this sparkle to kind of set the stone off. It's really about framing and setting the stones. Absolutely, and and just by their very nature, every jewel you make is a one-off. Yeah, I do one-offs. Most of the stuff, you know, I wouldn't be finding another opal like this. It's unusual in a square cushion, and uh, with with this, so. Most of the stones I work with are one of a kind. And um, so there's no... Oh, this is, I have to say, one of the ones that <laughs> really has caught my eye. And I, what I just find so dazzling about this is the fact that they're two stones that we know quite well. It's a tanzanite and an emerald. But the way you put them together just creates a whole new effect. Yeah, it's beautiful, really high cabochon tanzanite, and it's got a great, great kind of purpley pop. And then the emeralds are just so crystal clear, and they've got a great fire to them. It's, they're, they're from Brazil, and uh, mm. tanzanite Tanzanian. And um, it was cut in Germany, the cabochon. So you, um, you, um, you favour using small sort of artisan stone cutters, don't you? Yeah, I, I, you know, I work really now with very few people and really most of them are going to source and buying the rough and then cutting. So mm -hmm. I know with some of the other pieces, I know exactly, you know, I know the, exactly who cut it. And um, so like on the, the amethyst and rubelite on me, so I know that you know who's cut stones and it it's kind of i'm working with their pieces that are one-offs yeah because that's a very unusual cut as well both for the amethyst and the rubelite that sort of extended teardrop isn't it yeah it was a long teardrop i thought i'd do a pair of earrings with them but then mm -hmm. they look fantastic with the amethyst so um it's a and that's a really deep cut for the amethyst, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of ultraviolet purple. It's just um, the most beautiful stain with this. It amazing... is fabulous. And uh, but by um, you know, you wouldn't normally think of putting red with um, purple, would you? But that is an incredible combination. It looks just sort of out of this world. That richness of colour. Yeah, it's super intense saturation of colour. 
Uh-huh. You can see around all the stone, and that's in rose gold. Yeah, so you obviously left that mount open so that all the light comes in and you can appreciate the... Yeah, you sorry to be swinging around, but yeah, you can see <laughs> yeah. through to the bottom of the stones, mm -hmm. through the sides. So, so, so no two of your settings are the same, are they? No, everything, um, none of the stones the same, so um, none of the pieces the same. This is a ring I've just uh, finished last week. Oh, that's uh, beautiful. Which is blue zircon and then two spinels in a grey and dusty pink. Oh, that's so lovely. But what does that look like against the darker tree, um, Ben? Let's see against that. Yeah, that looks great there. Look at that. Wow. So what kind of a cut is that? They're a long hexagonal. They're like a stretched out hexagon. Uh, right. And so, mm -hmm. so I just saw all the different um, shapes and colours. So it's not symmetrical ring. Yeah, I can see that the, the green one is smaller, isn't it? Yeah, whereas I did make, this is a pair of dark grey hexagons right? in rose gold. And, and you say that one of your, um, well, I don't know if influence, but the way you describe yourself is um, <laughs> that you like punk. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, well, I grew up in that sort of time. I was a teen, you know, 16, 17. So that was when I was growing up. And um, so with Sid Vicious, like one of these, do you think? Uh, well, it's kind of more the, I guess the attitude and just the time and that people could do, you, you could do any, you know, anything it was sort of, I guess, possible. And people who didn't have any skills or trainings could, were doing things, magazines, music, film, <laughs> photography, everything, you know. Yeah. So this is a um, Morganite buff top. So it's got yeah. a cast on top, and then it's faceted down at the back. Underneath. So, so who? And um, where was that cut then? Uh, Germany, Edar. Yeah. Okay, because uh, so somebody's asking, do you custom cut your stones? And I think the answer is every stone is custom cut. Isn't all it? the all the stones are pretty much one-offs. I don't cut. I kind of mm -hmm. like to, but I think that's another another lifetime work, really. Yeah. But, um, there are people who cut interesting stones and they're not for like mass market or they're just individual people cutting things that they're passionate about and love. Yeah. And, 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 th and th this one is amazing. If we could we see it against the black again so that we can just yeah. appreciate that incredible shape of the shank because I think this really shows how you just are it. so meticulous about making a harmonious hole out of the jaw because it's that combination of the facets with the buff top and then the smooth form to what is actually quite a big ring. Yeah, it is big stone and it's mm. this real sort of motion from the, the way it curves out from the bottom. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it's the diamonds are grading in size as it gets to the top. And it's very subtle because because of that cabochon top, until you look right into it, you don't really see the full effect of the faceting and the colour of the stone. No, beautiful. And, um, and then it's got a star cut out in the back. Lovely detail. Wow. And Ben, you were saying to me when we um, spoke the other day that often you will take a whole ring apart if it doesn't quite flow. Yeah, right. that was that stone I'd put into it. I'd made a completely different ring all in platinum with white diamonds and um it didn't I, I didn't like it in the end <laughs> so I, it got um dismantled oh and dear so that's days and days of work just no, no the, well, that work. one was um more like weeks of work it had oh goodness it, it, it was surrounded with uh, white diamonds on and everywhere it possibly could it was mm -hmm. but it wasn't right so and, and and right for you is what is it uh an immediate sense when you see the jewel is it the feel well, of the, the balance i think about I, I think about the work before i make it for a long time 
So mm -hmm. I, I buy the stones without knowing what I'm going to do with them. There's no, I just buy the stones because I love them. There's That's no, very strategic, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it gets kind of tricky because there's always stones. And um, so I buy the stones because I love them. And then I, I, I'll, I'll think about what I'm going to make. And I have all other different colours. And I'll sit and kind of play with all the stones into different arrangements. And then the, the kind of, I'll know what I'm going to want to start making. So, you know, like on this, I, I wanted it really totally open and exposed. So Absolutely, you could feel yeah. all the stone. And the sort of idea, I can't really explain it, but like the design and the idea of it has like a feeling to me. And, and, that, and that then has to come into the work. Well, I think that does absolutely come through because your style is very strong, uh, very distinctive, and everything is different. So it is a very unique creation process, Ben. <laughs> well, it is. I, you know, it means I'm never making the same things twice. And, um, but also because I don't make collections, nothing is mm. bound by having to link to what came this, before yeah yeah what came before or what's coming after so it, each piece is it, it, an individual in its oh right own. yeah it, it yeah. doesn't have to link to anything else so there's no constraint of having to try and tie it into something else this is else before wow and tell, tell me about this then and let, maybe we can go back and you tell me about the the the, the, that, the the green one, Amazing. yeah. So this is tanzanite and rubies in rose gold. Um, and what a colour! Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah the colour is amazing. So I know uh, who cut this stone, and um, uh -huh. it has particularly like uh, some stretched out proportions and stuff. It's all kind of subtle things, but they change it from being just like other tanzanites you see. So all totally the, different, yeah. And, and the little detail on the tips of the claws, have, have you sort of made little points of them? When you yeah, so them? those are all pointed in. <laughs> um, this is one actually I worked with, with Nigel on. And mm -hmm. um, it, um, so it's got Ruby set into all of the claws. Oh my goodness. Whoop. Whoop. I haven't quite dropped it. And, uh, <laughs> So I'd bought all of these sets of uh, little princess cut stones, rubies mm -hmm. and uh, sapphires, all sorts of different colours. And then when you sit and play around with them, you realise how it's going to work with a certain piece. So the ring before was um, this one, which is a uh, tourmaline. Right. And, and you, you said to me that sometimes you buy from such small mines that often... You know the production has been and gone before you've you know. Yeah, and you get caught back home. Them. <laughs> yeah, and you know sometimes they're just they'll produce for a very short time in certain colours and then they're gone, and then you think, oh, that's great. I, mm. You know, like some more another piece in that colour, and you realise that it's gone. Um, oh, but that yeah. what makes them unique. Yeah, no, and, honestly, the colours that that we see here, are, you know, just totally different from the standard that you would expect of a green tourmaline or a, a tanzanite. Yeah. There is something very special about them. And um, Ben, someone's just asked, where do you source your stones and who's your lapidary? I can't pronounce that very well. So I think you've sort of been yeah. answering that. Well, you, I, that you I, them from I hope that's obviously like it's taken me a long time to find the people that... Oops. It's there. Sorry, we lost you, Ben, for a minute. Uh, sorry, I missed part of that. I'm sorry, it cut there out. There we are. No, don't worry, carry on, carry on. Yeah, obviously, you've got your sources and you've worked for years getting them. Ben, can you hold that up to the light by the window, maybe? And maybe we can get the effect of the incredible inclusions in there. The light's just started yeah. to go here, the British. Yeah, and here. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, this stone is, is tourmaline. You really can't kind of see... Uh, its colour is just extraordinary. So tourmaline's really kind of never this colour. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Is it kind it's of bluey got, gray, isn't it? It's bluey gray, but also in the daylight, it starts to, you can see some of them start. It's almost got like pinpoints of stars, of crystals and points that come up through the stone. And, um, and, and, and are they inclusions or just part of the, the structure yeah, of that stone? Yeah, they're tiny, tiny inclusions within the stone. And, um, right. It's what so it's, when it you look into it, it's quite mysterious. Yeah, it's yeah. a serious um, stone and the most unusual color. Mm. And, um, this this one is amazing. Uh, so this is Chris Afraise from Queensland in Australia. Right. And it's just the most pure kind of hit of colour. Totally. And to, a difficult to, to describe that colour because you so rarely see it, that sort of depth of green, but it's got a sort of softness about it. Yeah, and it's got kind of a little bit blue in it in the daylight when, when it's not mm -hmm. grey daylight. And um, it's just, it doesn't need any other stones or anything else with it. And the, the cut is just so unusual to have this super high cabochon oval. And, and, and the colour will, of course, in part be due to the cut and the fact that it is very high, that'll enhance. Yeah, it's very, oh, yeah. it's also very, there's, the piece that's rough that it's cut from is, was absolutely sort of pure solid colour. Wow. Um, so you saw the rough? No, I didn't see the rough for these, but you can see they must have had... Then you, then you could have said yes. <laughs> I know I could have said yes, but... <laughs> no, well... Too you honest. Know. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, you have to say what you think, don't you? Um, oh, that is a beautiful ring, and I love the simplicity of the setting that just lets that colour sing out. And then I thought I'd show you some earrings. Okay, they're, they're not quite in focus. Let's have a look. Uh, maybe hold them against the dark then. That might be easier to focus. Is that not better? Getting, not really. Um, maybe hold them back and then move in. Have, you've got your camera flipped around, haven't you? Yeah. You're just going to have to put them on for us then. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, but I'm not going to get this right. Okay, we get the effect that we can see the effect. So that those are um, um, the bottom. Um, yeah, but it's not going to be in focus for you. That's better. Yeah. So we've got amethyst at the top. That's it. Yeah. Uh huh. Amethyst, ruby, and then grey spinel hexagons. Mm -hmm. Um, in rose gold. Wow. Yeah. Those are really spectacular. With... Because... with Zircon, is that Zircon? Are these in focus? Yeah, those, those are better, yeah. Yeah, blue Zircons and grey and, and a pair of grey canals too. And again, what an unusual cut for the Zircon. Yeah, they're fantastic, this long kite. Yeah, um, wow. And it, it, it almost so looks they... like you've used a you, you know, you've, the metal around it is blue as well, but it's not. It's just the colour sort of, yeah, out, doesn't it? Yeah, we, there's a tiny amount of metal. So really all you're seeing is the blue from the stones. Mm -hmm. Wow, those are gorgeous. And then I thought I'd show you this pair of mismatch Tahitian pearls. Okay, in, well, let's see the focus on those. In so that we've got a group. Go ahead, Ben, tell me. So one of them's more kind of coppery brown, and then the other mm -hmm. one's got real petroly colours, and they're with a pair of Malaya garnets wow. in rose. Very dramatic. So somebody's asked a very difficult question. Go which on. Is, which is your favourite gemstone? <laughs> uh, well, it changes depending on what I'm working on. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you sort of 
fall I fall in love with them when I'm when I'm buying them, and then mm -hmm. once I start working on them again, then you because you, you spend so long working on it, you really yeah, you see could... all the little details, and they're all individual. It's like little fingerprints within the stone. Um, so a kind of each one, uh, the at the moment I love the big cabochon grey, lavender grey tourmaline. It's mm. an extraordinary, extraordinary stone. Also, I saw it a year. I saw it one year, but I'd already mm -hmm. bought a lot of stones, and I had to sort of say no. And then I saw it again a year later. It was fate. <laughs> it was going and to be buying it. Um, and, 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 yeah, you're, and now you're showing us a turquoise, which um, looks surprising, like a map of the world. Yeah, this is turquoise atlas. So it is um, Kingman turquoise, Arizona. And then it's so set again, King, Kingman. Kingman, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And it's set with uh, treated little red diamonds and rubies on a faceted gold chain as well. And it looks sort of like a, 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 a compass or a... Um... Yeah, I wanted it to have Something some... Nautical. So it's, yeah, it's like a, an atlas, but I also wanted all of the, I didn't want it to be symmetrical. I wanted it to have kind of motion to it um, in the way that the settings are on the piece. Kind Absolutely, of, it's a whole world yeah. in there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then we, we haven't we haven't spoken about prices at all, but um, obviously because your stones are quite rare, each one is very much individually priced. Yes. So they range um, really from the pieces I've been showing you from about four thousand eight hundred on the opal mm -hmm. up to a. 18 and a half on maybe the on the tourmaline on pieces like this is okay, about can you show us the, the, the opal again ben that spectacular yeah. opal <laughs> let's see that so that one is four thousand what did you say 4800 uh-huh that is quite a ring from. that's going to make a big impression isn't it yeah mm -hmm. it certainly is um and then the top of the range there is, is that, that tourmaline. Yes. And did the you tell tourmaline. us where that tourmaline was from? Is it, did you say it's, it was Afghan? Yes, I'm going to just double check, but it is um, mm -hmm. actually Namibian in Africa. Namibian, okay. Yeah. And I've, this is, this one is Afghan. That's, oh, yeah, is, you haven't shown us this one, Ben, which is one of my no. favorite. What <laughs> other rings I have? I don't see. Um, I mean, that is just, just so this was a sugar spectacular loaf. coming together with the colour of the cut. With such a dramatic little white colour. diamonds. Wow. And what, where's that one from, did you say, Ben? This one is Afghan. That one, that one is Afghan, right. So somebody's asked, do you ever work yeah. with Sphene? Do you ever work with Sphene, Ben? I do like, I love it, but it's quite soft. Uh, so, but when it's really good, it has the most mad um, colours that come out of it. And it's got a fantastic name as well. <laughs> that's a fantastic name. That's, that's all important. <laughs> and ben, ben, somebody else has yeah. asked, do you ever work with 24 karat gold? No, ten. I mean, I use twenty-two. Um, okay. I use twenty-two on on certain pieces. I think this one's going to be too dark in the. Um, oh, so this is a, this a big Brazil. This is Brazilian, very blue green, tourmaline. And oh, I don't amazing. know if it'll go. Oh, but we we could see it there. Yeah, and maybe that's a good place to put it. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, it's like gazing into a, a, a deep pool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's 
super clean this one it's very un it's very clean very beautiful so often yeah. when they're really clean like that they'll facet them mm -hmm. um so it's unusual to find them as cabochons Oh, and, and, and this one is amazing. This one has got that, that sort of, um, what do you call it, a lion's mane, I think you described it as, didn't you? Yeah, someone uh, described it as a lion mane, lion's mane. Mm -hmm. It's um, spinel in a cut, it's called Flanders cut, which is like an old cut of diamond. Mm -hmm. And then it's got natural brown diamonds to the side in rose gold. But then that's and, all open in between, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. And because you work a lot with single stones or three stones, that that is quite a classical composition, or at least a classical concept. Yeah, but then it's, there's nothing classical about the setting. No, it's like a twist off uh, a, a, a kind of classic design, kind of design, but it's a twist off it. So it's um, it, it has things I, I'm interested in with its. Mm the kind of so feeling of the that... ring and sorry yeah. go on sorry. sorry to interrupt Ben so the, are the people who buy your jewellery are they normally people who are particularly interested in gemstones or have they seen your work and just love your style do you educate them along the way how, how does it work um, I think um, it all uh, a lot of the people don't know really any you know much about the stones mm. but they see the pieces and love them so some will come in and will try on all sorts of different colors and pieces to see what's right and there'd be you know something that's very specific for them and um and then we'll talk about the stones because most of them are unusual stones and um so then i'll talk to them about where they're from and and it's kind of more of a learning process I guess but I think really it's just they get a sort of instant reaction from the, the stones and the pieces and then finding out more about it afterwards kind of helps but it's more of a gut feeling I think and also the piece looks right on them and because I make all individual pieces mm. you can try on all different things until there's the kind of right one and then I do commission where people want specific stones and they are much more specific about things. And so I'll find and um, bring stones in for them. So I choose it that way, yeah. It's, it's definitely, I think, for somebody who really appreciates the, the whole craft of jewellery making from sourcing a unique stone from the cutting to the fact that you make it one by one, absolutely unique. So that really makes you stand out I think Ben and it's been <laughs> amazing seeing your incredible jewellery thank you She's been no, thank, th thank you and, and um, I'm sure that the people who've been watching have been enjoying it as well and I'll answer any questions if you send them to me later thank you I'll send them one to you yeah I'll be happy to answer them all right Ben that was fantastic thank you so much thank you thank you very much bye bye bye, bye. bye. bye.